In the midst of social distancing and business lockdowns, a freelance writer and a graphic artist bought a bus, converted it into a tiny home on wheels, and moved out of our four-bedroom house. One year later, we downsized to a Chevy Express. Now we travel between Texas and Pennsylvania from April through November while exploring small towns with rich histories. In the winter, we hunker down in Texas in our schoolie and dream of our next big trip. We're Alan and Teresa. And we're rolling with our nomies. Welcome to Waco, Texas. Um, this is... <laughs> this uh, oh this is one of my favorite oh, little towns. And I think you'll see why here in a little bit. Oh, I have very fond memories of Waco as a small child growing up here. It was and, founded uh, for the Waco Indians. Yep, is named after the Waco Indians that were living here uh, prior to uh, the city being founded. And we're looking at a plaque in front of City Hall that denotes all the support Waco has provided through the Civil War, World War One, and the like. What year was Waco uh, founded? founded? 1849-ish? Yeah, somewhere around that, that time frame. They've got an awesome fountain out front of um, City Hall. <laughs> and we're looking at, at the, city, the city municipal building and that beautiful fountain. And then we'll proceed down Austin Street, and here's the uh, Roosevelt Hotel. Yeah, then 1871, a man named Peter McClellan, the local businessman, built the McClellan Hotel at 4th and Austin Streets. And in the 1920s, he sold the building to Conrad Hilton. Well, his heirs sold it. Well, his heirs, you're right. And... Uh, you know, he was, of course, famous for his worldwide hotel chain by that name. And if you're familiar with Paris Hilton, then you know who we're talking about. During the Great Depression, Hilton took a big hit, had to sell the Waco Hotel to local investors, along with several other hotels in his chain. And in 1934, the hotel's name changed to Roosevelt Hotel in honor of President Franklin Roosevelt and his New Deal programs. The Roosevelt Hotel went on to be to world renown as one of the most impressive hotels on the planet. And it survived, interesting thing here, it survived the 1953 Waco tornado, but ended up shutting down in 1961 when retailers began exiting the city and moving to the suburbs. Since then, it's been converted into a luxury high-rise for business offices. There was a tornado went through Waco in 1953. It killed 114 people. Yeah, something did like that. countless damage to the city. And there's a little plaque here that you can pause the video and read all about the, the damage that the tornado did. Yeah, but, the interesting thing about that tornado is it did a lot of damage to the city, uh, including... Uh, some damage to the uh, the hotel here, uh, even though it you know it wasn't much, and and the Alico building which you'll soon see, but uh, it, it did a lot of damage, killed some people, but uh, some of the most prominent buildings uh, sustained very little damage. And the, and the city wasn't permanently damaged. They came together and rebuilt very quickly, and the Alico building, which we're going to see here in just a hot second actually sustained minor damage which is amazing for as tall as it is and it simply just swayed a couple of feet but there is the alico building yep there it is uh the alico building is an interesting building it was built in 1911 it cost seven hundred and fifty five thousand dollars at the time in today's dollars that would be over 20 million dollars uh, so they put a lot of money into that it's well known as the second oldest skyscraper in Texas, uh, owned by the insurance company Alico. Um, 
which is an acronym for its actual name, and now I don't remember what that means, <laughs> but uh, it, it's an... Uh, it's a, and you'll see it on this plaque if you want to pause the video. It tells you what the name of the building is. It's American the insurance company is. Amicable uh, Insurance Company. Yeah, so anyways, Alico stands... It's an insurance company name. In 1953, when the tornado came through, it took a direct hit from that tornado, yet... It le it was still left standing, and only sustained uh, sustained minor damage. Now the neon sign at the top of the building, very famous sign, which you can see from miles and you'll miles just away. See it, you'll see it in just a minute. Yeah, you'll you'll see it in a little bit. It was added in 1966 when the insurance company that owns it renovated the building and modernized it, and uh, it was designated as a national historic landmark by the Texas Historical Commission in 1982 and added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2012. And it's, it's, it's got some awesome um, terracotta detail work on the upper four floors. And you can, as soon as I we turn around here and show you with the camera, you'll be able to see the detail at the top of that building and it's absolutely amazing. What amazes me is that in 1911 this building was built. Yeah. They didn't have all the modern conveniences we have now. It's still impressive. Uh, and they built a parking garage that matches it. And and that boggles my mind. There's that sign right there. You can see that from miles and miles away. And it, you know the Alico building is still the tallest building in Waco at 282 feet and remains one of the most well-known buildings in the world. But they built a, 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 a garage yeah. on the back of this building. How many cars were there really in 1911? Beats me. I'm I mean, sure there were enough to have a garage. Oh, here's our favorite, uh, here's our favorite part about any county seat. Yeah, we're looking at the McLennan County Courthouse here in Waco, Texas. It was designed, interestingly, it was designed by the same architect that designed the Ellis County Courthouse in Waxahachie, Texas. I guess that should be a clue as to why it's so beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's a gorgeous and building. The steps and the foundation of this building are uh, rose-colored granite that is evidently local to Texas. Yeah. Uh, the exterior uh, is designed in the neoclassical style. And you'll see in a second as we get closer, closer, the pilasters and columns are Corinthian. Three statues at the top represent Lady Justice. And at the top, standing on top of the dome, is a Greek goddess Themis holding a double-edged sword and a pair of scales. She's one of the three. And, yeah. and you saw it in the previous frame that the three of them are up there. Now, some interesting history... Clyde Barrow, famous outlaw of the early 20th century. Of Bonnie and Clyde. Yep, of Bonnie and Clyde, stood trial here at this courthouse in 1930 and was sentenced to two years in prison. But before he could serve those years, he broke out of the county jail. They were planning to transfer him to Huntsville, the state prison, but... The county jail is actually attached by walkways to the back of this courthouse. So, the fact that he broke out of the jail is pretty awesome. But, I mean, if you're a, a Clyde Barrow or a Bonnie and Clyde fan, I happen to think they were pretty cool. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a pretty interesting part of, of the history, I thought, of this, uh, of this courthouse building. Another thing is uh, the first televised murder trial took place in this courthouse in 1955. And so that's another little bit of uh, history, a little trivia for you. I mean, strange things in, in little towns in Texas. Yeah. So if I had my choice as to which, Here's the... which courthouse I would stand trial in, I think it would be McLennan County. I'd want to stand where Clyde Barrow stood. You would? Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, 
you're not going to have a long transport if they find you guilty and send you to county jail. That's true. They could just, just walk, walk. me right, right down the hallway. I mean, it, that's amazing. But there you can see that, that rose-colored granite in yeah. those steps. It's absolutely gorgeous. Those steps are really beautiful. Um, you, you can see them a lot better in person. Uh, but, yeah, they're, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I think we've got a, a view here of a couple that were going to the courthouse to get their marriage license, and, and you accosted them. Yeah, we met a couple here. They were on <laughs> we, their way. We, yeah, we stopped them. Yeah, they were on their way to get a marriage license, and I asked him what he thought of the courthouse. <laughs> he was startled. And there you said, can see the ladies on top. Yeah, he said, I love it. Yep, there's the granite. You can see uh, Teresa's finger pointing at it. She had to touch it. Yeah, it's just absolutely There was no gorgeous. sign that says, do not touch. So. No, no. There were no signs that told me I couldn't touch things. And I guess we did not record them. Yeah, we didn't include the uh, the couple. Okay, they're probably thankful for that. And they are. They are. And there's St. Paul's Episcopal Church. All right. This church has quite a history to it, too. Uh, the Episcopal Church established a mission in Waco, Texas in 1868 and built its first building in another part of the city and then appointed a rector and and while that church was being, while that building was being built, they met outside and in private homes. But in 1878, they sold that building to the city of Waco and then built this building right here, and it's still standing. So it's been here since 1878. And this is the oldest uh, standing church building still in use by a congregation in Waco, Texas. Oh, I think that's it's one of the oldest in Texas. Yeah, it probably is. It's you know since 1878, um, and, and and you look at it, it. I mean, you can tell it's aged, but it is not run down. It it's is, still well kept. It is absolutely beautiful. It's it's really gorgeous. You'll get a better view of it here in a little second. The, some interesting little facts about the, the stained glass windows. Uh, they depict local people memorialized by the congregation at the time that they were made. Uh, for instance, on one of the windows, St. Luke bears a resemblance to one of the parents of that window's donors. Uh, but also around the edge of one of the windows are the signatures the of men who built the bell tower. And the only way to access the bell tower is through a uh, is with a ladder because it's three stories tall and there's no stairway. But interestingly, the bell itself is the only known item transferred from the original church building. So there you have oh, it. Oh, here's it. We're coming up on the Washington Avenue Bridge. It's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous bridge. Yeah, this bridge uh, is interesting too. There's uh, two bridges that are interesting in Waco. You the Suspension Bridge, which is currently closed, and the Washington Avenue yeah, Bridge. Yeah, the, the Waco Suspension Bridge is, is significant in its own. Uh, you can see the bridge there in the distance. Uh, we're pretty close to it, about a block from it at this point. Uh, but you'll see it better as we get closer. It's made of steel and connects the east side of Waco to downtown. And uh, it was built in 1900 to accommodate the growing needs of pedestrian traffic in Waco because it was growing really fast at the time. It was a popular destination. People and they only had the suspension bridge. Yeah, at that time, all they had was the Waco suspension bridge from 1870 through 1900. And it was the only reliable way to cross the Brazos River on foot in the city of Waco. So... Because the city was growing, they needed to uh, build another bridge, and they built the Washington Avenue Bridge. It began in 1901. Construction uh, began in 1901 and was completed in 1902. They tested the bridge using vehicles from the city's fire department, including fire engines, a wagon, and some other vehicles. 
and they drove down it really fast like they were going to a fire because they really wanted to test it, it and was, see if it worked. And it was a new concept. Right. This was a new concept, this this uh, Pennsylvania tr three truss yeah, the truss, style bridge. Yeah, Pennsylvania, they call it a Pennsylvania through truss and it was a it was a new concept at the time, uh, and so they built it. At the time, it was the longest Pennsylvania through truss bridge in the Southwest. And and in fact, in 1936, there was a flood, and and even though the bridge had already been in use for 34 years, the town leaders still closed the bridge because it has. Um, it has piers underneath. Yeah, piers. And, and because they were very much afraid that the the raging floodwaters would wash out the piers. So they closed it. They left the suspension bridge open because it spans the river. It has nothing supporting it. Yeah, so they they <laughs> thought they thought the rising uh, floodwaters would wash out the uh, the pillars that hold up the bridge. And there's the suspension uh, bridge. As as fate would have, yeah, there's the suspension bridge you can see. But as fate would have it, the bridge stood up to the floodwaters, and and it's still standing. So, but they did renovate the bridge in 2004 and 2009, even though less than five percent of the bridge needed to be replaced. So uh, they did a remarkable, remarkable job on the construction of the bridge. It's still in use today by pedestrians and by vehicles. Yeah, we walked on it. Now, I will tell you that when cars go across that bridge and you're standing on it, that, that bridge vibrates. You can feel it shaking. I wanted to get off of it very quickly. Yeah, but uh, it's still the oldest and longest Pennsylvania through truss bridge still in use in the United States. So, uh, Waco, Texas has a lot going for it. Yeah, it's very, it, I mean, we spent, we spent an afternoon and walked, um, I think I, I said we had walked about six miles that day, and we did not, we didn't cover even a small portion of what Waco's got. It's an absolute. All right, if I don't do this right, then my wife's, I'm going to be on the bad side of my wife. So y'all bear with me and pray for me. But while you're doing that, don't forget, share us with your friends. Like us if you like us. Like us if you don't. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us out. God bless.